Welcome to the webinar, Payables and Reviewables, What Your Auditor Will Need to Know. My name is Eric Wallace with Argyle, and it's great to have everyone joining us today. I have a few administrative details to share with you, then we'll dig into our discussion. First, we'd like to thank Bill for their partnership with today's event. They've been wonderful thought leadership partners to Argyle, and they're committed to providing you with valuable content and a great overall experience. Thank you again to Bill. We appreciate you joining us today. We welcome you to stay connected during today's event. For those of you who are active tweeters, please follow us on Twitter at Argyle Exec Forum. I also wanted to take a minute to touch on our content neutrality policy, which we've curated based on the feedback we've received over the years from our members. Argyle is very proud and protective of this policy as it reflects our commitment to ensure the neutrality and overall value of the content presented at our events. We've worked closely with our speaking faculty to ensure that you receive a set of balanced and neutral viewpoints during the session today, and we appreciate our member support of this policy. For those of you who are seeking CPE credit today, you must answer at least three polling questions and remain on the session for its duration. Polls can be found under the polls tab on the right hand side of your screen right next to chat. Afterwards, if you're eligible to receive credit, you will receive an email with a link to your certificates. If you have any questions about credit, please email cpe at argyleforum.com. Finally, most importantly, please submit all questions that come up during today's event in the chat section of the interface. Before we start, I'd like to have our speaker introduce herself and then we'll begin our discussion. First off, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Can you please introduce yourself and give us a little bit of information about your professional background with AP and AR? Yes, thank you, Eric, for the invite. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as for my introduction, I currently run uh, finance and operations at an insure tech company. It's a spin-off from a navigation company. Uh, my responsibilities include managing all of uh, accounting and FP&A, so AP and A are an integral part of the responsibilities. Along with that, I have uh, run AP and AR orgs uh, over 10 years now across multiple organizations. So very well tuned with the content that we have today. Great. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Let's begin with our first question. What does it mean for a business to be audit ready? And I'd also like to call everyone's attention to the first poll, which will appear in the poll section on the right hand side of your screen. So for a business to be audit ready is essentially it's a test, right? A financial audit is an examination of an evaluation of your financial records to make sure that they are fairly and accurately represented and all uh, companies are really saying what they claim to transact in. It's a pretest of all your systems, processes, documentation, so that you know that when the auditors come in, you're good to go. Thank you. So what AP and AR information are auditors generally looking for? AP and AR information that auditors generally looking for are always completeness, validity, and compliance of records. And this is true across the board. Like if you are in these departments in the accounting organization, you should always, always be focused on your documentation, your completeness of the transaction, the truthfulness of the transactions and you're complying with your own policies. This, this represents an accurate view of your business. So what do businesses need to do to prepare for an AP audit? So um, for an AP audit, obviously, like if you're coming in as a fresh new company, it's gonna be the first time for you. But if you are an established company, there are certain processes and procedures that you might already have. And it's, it's very easy to boost net, especially when we talk about AT, AP audit, it's very easy to boost your net income by not recording your pe period and payables. So absolutely, you need to be prepared for your AP audit some of the things you need to consider for AP audit is to ensure that there are no unrecorded liabilities at the end of the period or end of payables. 
um, there is a risk of theft that exists when you're talking about AB. So make sure you have enough documentation. There are no duplicate payments, um, no illegitimate payments, because that can increase the fraud risk and overall theft in the company. Having a lot of things um, lined up, your processes, your documentation, uh, your review processes, and the systems, all of those needs to be ready for an AP, AP audit. Uh, a few you. other things that come to my mind are also evaluate your internal controls. For again, I, I can't stress enough on how important it is to be accurate and compliant with the rules of GAP and the overall SOX rules. So always be prepared and keep your process documentations ready. Great, thank you. The next question may have a very similar answer and that's what do businesses need to do to prepare for an AR audit? So uh, AP is when you pay out, AR is when you receive. So accuracy and documentation is again quite an important part of that. But on the AR side, make sure your invoices are accurate and they match your sales transactions. You know, having all those three way, two way matching helps you ensure that there is no inaccuracy in your documentation and recording. Um, keep your accounting systems up to date. If uh, there are any workflows that you're implementing, make sure that is traceable and keep the AR process simple. If there is a sale that has happened, it has to be associated with a sales order with a customer. There are different things that you can do for AR audit ensure uh, invoices are correctly documented, your cash is correctly uh, applied to the right invoices. So different things that can be done for AR is documentation, documentation, documentation. Thank you. The next question is, what do you believe are the most important AP, what do you believe are the most important AP and expense assertions and why? So the primary relevant AP and expense assertions are existence, completeness, and cutoff. Existence, what does existence mean? You cannot record something if it did not occur. So you have to make sure before recording, it actually did exist. And indeed, there were services that you received as a company. Again, from completeness perspective, did you receive $10 worth of services or $100 worth of services? So ensuring you're recording the right amounts and the right type of services is very important. And cut off. Period, like in any accounting uh, firm and audit readiness, period and cut off procedures are very, very important. You cannot be receiving some services in one period, recording them in another period. So having that clean cutoff is very important for any kind of assertions that you're gonna make. Make, mm -hmm. make sure you send out messages to the company and, and the businesses asking for any invoices. This will help you ensure that you are completely recording all the records that you have received and also all the services that you have received as a company. So having these small procedures also help you being in, being in compliant. Thank you. So what questions should AP leaders be asking as you, they do walkthroughs of their procedures? So very important things are, and these are not just for AP leaders, but as accountants also, we, this should be ingrained in our blood that you know we always have to have good documentation do you have a good p2p process documented what is the review process what is an approval matrix do you have all of that documented do you have evidence uh, of review it can be an email it can be i'm i'm hoping that nowadays we are getting away from paper evidence and sign off but uh, 
an email evidence, a DocuSign, things like that is a very good evidence of documentation of review, right? In maintain a threshold of review. There are multiple invoices or bills that you will be receiving throughout uh, the cycle. Keep a threshold like uh, above a thousand dollars. Another person is reviewing the invoices. Uh, what are your key reports and key data input uh, that uh, needs to be used for controls? Uh, what is how do you make sure that the report is complete or the report is accurate? These are some of the, the very basic things AP leaders should be asking of themselves and their teams. And if you have good answers to these questions, you are audit ready. There are, there's no auditor who can come in and say, no, you've not done this process. Very basic things to think about. So what are some typical controls weaknesses in AP and how can they be addressed? So uh, based on these uh, previous things that I just laid out, some of the control weaknesses are you can eliminate fraud. Fraud is the biggest uh, risk that any AP department has, AP processes has. The frauds can be internal, external, you could be in a situation if you are not maintaining enough controls, there are no services delivered, but a friend of yours just sent an invoice and you sent a payment to them. That is fraud. So having right controls is important. With conflicts of interest, similarly, like uh, the same person should not be booking invoices or bills and making the payment you need to make sure there are separation of duties there missed payments is another weakness you can risk the services that you are receiving if you don't pay them on time missed accruals um, incorrect representation of the services received these are your liabilities you can be uh, missing any accruals and incorrectly representing your financials and of course, one of the uh, big control weakness can be lack of audit trail. Now, having everything uh, done on a verbal basis, somebody comes and says that, yeah, go ahead and pay this invoice without confirming. That's a big um, risk that you are uh, uh, facing if you are not keeping enough audit trail. Some of the, right. so I can, um, consolidate these uh, controls and risks uh, into obligation to pay controls, data entry controls, and payment entry controls. Keeping all of these in mind, make sure you have enough processes in place to address these risks that you might face. So what are some of the, moving along on this general subject of risks, what are some of the risks for AP and how can they be addressed? So similarly to the above um, discussions that we just had, the risks are risk of fraud, theft, and nowadays with so much of online going on, a lot of work business is done online. So cybercrime, there's a lot of risks related to cyber activities. I'm sure uh, your organizations might be looking at things like, okay, all of a sudden the AP clerk is receiving an email from the CEO of the company saying that transfer X amount of money to my bank account. Obviously, as an AP clerk, we need to be alert and attentive that if the CEO does not communicate with you on a regular basis, this is a crime. This is a phishing attack. So do not ever do anything without getting approval and review from your team members to from your managers, especially when you see things like this. Um, another risk of uh, AP is process dependent on an internal team. If all of the transactions are happening between one or two people, that is a risk. The company is relying on the accuracy and the authentication of only few people. So having 
different review channels, different levels is very important for any company. Risk of error. A lot of companies have not yet automated their AP processes. So there can be manual in, manual finger uh, fat fingering, which increases the risks of errors for the AP team. Um, so these are like fraud is a very big one. Um, error prone uh, processes. And of course, uh, you're dealing with cash and payment. So theft is a very big risk that AP has. Thank you. So what, what do you need to do to find unrecorded liabilities? So unrecorded liabilities are things that pop up after a period has ended. So reviewing your payment vouchers issued after year end, for example, and unpaid supplier invoices that are sitting at somebody's desk, reviewing those kind of things will help you uncover a lot of unrecorded liabilities. And this is a risk for the company because you have not represented this information in your financials. So you are understating your liabilities and in turn, the completeness and accuracy of your financials is in question. So the way to recover our, our unrecorded liabilities or identify is to make sure you're always tracking your payments, your bank statements, any cash that goes out after the period end and is not recorded in your books is your first uh, place to look for. So all cash disbursement made after a period is the first place to look for. Great, thank you. So what are some things that AP leaders can do to reduce their risk of theft? Um, to reduce the risk of theft, First and foremost is implement tight accounting controls. This, this doesn't need to be, oh, uh, everybody has to follow this, 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 and it can be a collaboration effort along with your businesses. Make them aware why you're doing certain things. Why is it important for the company to be in control and in compliance? So do frequent audits. You don't need to have like uh, people dedicating weeks and weeks together of their time to do these audits. Do frequent and smaller audits to ensure that employees are aware of these practices. Establish policies that enables employees to report any thefts. If for example, um, your engineering person is good buddies with your AP person and uh, they just make a settlement or uh, a, 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 a something out of the ordinary and there are payments going through. This should be a red flag for the company, right? Understanding the relationship, reviewing these kind of payments. Why are we paying to certain vendors when we are not really using those vendors? These are the different things you can do to identify if there are any risks or uh, is there any theft going on? And of course, model and reward uh, positive behavior. If you see that uh, there are practices and uh, employees are coming to you and telling you there is something wrong. Encourage that kind of behavior, appreciate the transparency that they are bringing in and uh, reward loyalty. Re rewarding loyalty does not always mean um, cash loyalty or monetary. Good behavior, follow your uh, um, uh, values, uh, appreciate the transparency that the employees are bringing in. And of course, take corrective actions. One of the things that uh, as companies you can always do is uh, get uh, some commercial crime insurance bought in. So, so that whenever there are any kind of white collar crimes, you're not vulnerable and have to pay everything all of your cash out to pay for those kind of crimes. 
having this commercial crime insurance covers you as well. The, generally, this includes uh, anything like employee theft, embezzlement, computer fraud, or wire transfer. These kind of things are generally covered by commercial crime insurance. Great, thank you. So what are some guidelines for designing and performing fraud detection procedures? What needs to go into those? So um, fraud detection procedures, instead of thinking it all as a, a scary word and all those things, I think the key message I want would want to communicate here is a strong tone at the top helps eliminate any kind of fraud, or at least the thought of doing fraud. If you have an, a good tone at the top, your leaders are also communicating the authenticity and the requirement of keeping things clean and also communicating that there will be consequences. The chances of fraud being in the company is, is limited. Increased skepticism and robust communication within the financial reporting process, it does deter fraud. Like you need to be very upfront and communicate with your employees as to what happens in terms of a fraud, not giving them ideas, but telling them there are consequences for everything. It's, it doesn't need to be big or small uh, fraud, but any type of fraud will have consequences. And having a, a good uh, fraud management framework, uh, like having good governance and assessment, keep on assessing any kind of odd activities. Make it part of your routine job. Like, um, you know, every Wednesday, pick up a few invoices, pick up a few bills, go talk to the actual service, uh, uh, the person who has received the service, talk to them about the service figure out uh, on a soft soft note basis, did he really receive the service or are we just paying for something which was never received? Things like that can help you identify fraud ahead of time before it actually becomes a fraud. Great, thank you. So what do you believe are the most important AR and revenue assertions and why? So switching gears from cash going out to cash coming in, uh, the relevant uh, AR and revenue assertions are existence and occurrence, again, completeness and accuracy. If we have not delivered something, we cannot book that in our books. We cannot record that in our books. So you have to make sure that we actually delivered a service or a license or a software, something, so before we record that in our books. Um, going back to completeness and accuracy, I think this is a theme that is valid across all audit procedures, all, all recordings of any transactions that happen in the company. It should always be complete and accurate. This also drives your top line revenue. So you before book anything, make sure the delivery actually happened and is accurately reflected. Great. So what questions should AR leaders be asking as they do walkthroughs of their procedures as opposed to the AP procedures? So AR is you are making sure that we get paid for our services. And how do we do that? So the first and foremost is you want to do business with a customer. You need to understand their credit worthiness. Establish a good credit practice. Make sure you do a credit review. If it is a public company, there are enough information, DUNS is available. If it is a private company, ask simple questions. Hey, how long have you been in existence? What is generally your payment schedule? Um, how many times have you delayed any payment? Simple questions and if necessary, Talk to the banks that they deal with. They will be able to tell you how good of a company this is so that when you deliver their services, you are not stuck and you are still getting paid for your services. 
establish good invoicing procedures. As soon as the service is delivered, establish a process to generate an invoice. Make sure it's always accurate and complete and you're reflecting enough information in the invoice so that the customer sees what they are going to pay for, the type of services. Track your AR. Um, uh, always make sure that your AR is reflected correctly. If it is um, concentrated on one customer, that gives you an idea that your AR might be, AR balance might be at risk if it's just focused on one customer. It, it does not mean that you should not be do, dealing with that customer. It means you need to come up with the different processes to engage other customers as well. And accounting for your accounts receivable. That's also another very crucial thing that is your AR correctly reflected in your books? Um, is your balance sheet reflected correctly? Do you have to maintain any allowance accounts? Do you anticipate any bad debts? So different things uh, that AR leaders should ask are the entire Q2C process. Document, 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 document your processes and document your review processes as well. Thank you. So what are some typical controls weaknesses in AR and how can they be addressed? Um, as we deal with cash coming in, that is a very critical uh, risk that we need to address when talking about AR. So timeliness of cash deposits and account reconciliations is very, very important. Review of these reconciliations is very important. And especially when talking about AR only, overdraft funds monitoring, right? There can be different things happening with your cash, cash reconciliation, bad debts, overdrafts. All of these things can be very critical. And going back a step back in the process is the credit review process. Did we do the right thing when we did the credit review of a customer? Are we ever going to get paid? So these are diff different control views that we should be monitoring. And uh, these are the risks that we run as a business when we don't do this. And in some cases, like uh, nowadays, physical inventory is not that much. But physical inventory is also a part of a control weaknesses that AR can get impacted on. Thank you. So what are some of the primary primary risks for AR and how can they be addressed? So AR drives your revenue. A lot of times your revenue is all like your AR and revenue goes hand in hand. So if you do not have the right AR, there's a chance your revenue is overstated. And if your revenue is overstated, obviously your financials are not correct, right? Um, you're recording more receivables or re less receivables than what your customers actually owe you. So this results in potentially uncollectible accounts and a uh, lot of bad debts that you might have to write off. And then again, it questions your authenticity of your credit process, authenticity of your customer review process. So keep these are uh, the biggest risk that I see for AR is overstatement of revenue. Then cutoff, again, cutoff is a very standard audit procedure that a lot of uh, pro, uh, processes need to follow the cutoff process. So making sure that you're recording your revenue and AR within the cutoff period is very important. Otherwise, your balance sheet will not be stated correctly. I talked a little bit about AR concentration. Uh, if, it, if your AR is concentrated only on a handful of customers, there is a big risk that you run as a business that will you be able to collect this AR? If you don't collect from one of the customers, does that mean your uh, uh, financials are going to go down? And AR essentially brings in cash 
to your company. So this is a major source of your working capital that helps you sustain your business. Having that right AR and the right assessment of AR is very, very important. So what happens if, if your AR is clustered on this handful of firms, what happens if one of them is just unable to pay? Well, that's, that's when it questions your controls ahead of time. If you had done the right credit review, before you signed up with that customer, then you will not be in that situation. And there are some times where you have to work with the customers if they are in a cash crunch situation, you negotiate those things so that at least if you're not, if they're not able to pay within a, their net payment terms, figure out a way to give them a payment plan so that you ensure that you at least collect the money. Even if it is coming in small chunks, you still collect the money. You're still getting something, right? You're still getting something. Figure out payment plans. Worse come to worse, figure out if you can collect at least 90 cents on a dollar or something. Instead of losing the entire AR, there are ways you can make it easier and work with your customers. Generally, no customer is opposed when you're trying to help them out if they are in a dire situation. They will make sure that if you've been a good vendor for them, they will help and figure out a way so that they can make the payments for you. Great, thank you. So what are some things that leaders should keep in mind after the AP audit, post AP audit? Well, maintaining and tracking good documentation is the key, key element I can stress enough. Keep your hygiene good. If you are doing it right from the get go, there isn't anything you should be doing out of ordinary as part of your processes after the audit is finished. Keep uh, good hygiene in terms of maintaining your, in terms of AP, keep W9s keep good, uh, uh, more most accurate and recent W9s, your vendor setup form with the right banking information. If you are using the PO process, make sure those POs are most current and accurate. If you are, um, if there is a review process you're doing, make sure it is automated. The more you automate stuff, the better it is for you and less manual intervention. So I can stress enough that maintaining good documentation is the key to any audit success. An audit doesn't feel like audit if you are doing this on a regular basis. So on the top, so, um, so what are some things that, uh, we'll get to automation in just a second. Okay. What are some things that leaders need to keep in mind post AR audit? Again, <laughs> documentation <laughs> is uh, pretty much the same theme here. Post AR audits, if there are any receipt, any payments that you have received or any invoices that you have generated, keep documentation and uh, put it out there. Don't hide anything. It's never a good idea to hide anything from the auditors. They will find out eventually, either through their soft procedures or follow on procedures or post audit procedures. The auditors are not just talking to you, but remember they are doing their procedures with your customers, confirming the um, statement and AR and invoicing with your vendors, confirming the services. So don't hide anything, always be upfront. If you were not able to record something, that's okay. Let them know. Make sure you have documentation and email communication from your managers, from your controller, or even from your CFO. If you are making a decision, why was that decision made to not record it? If there are certain decisions made on thresholds, document it in your email so that that is a record that you can present to your auditors. So those are specific things you should be looking out and uh, to make sure that uh, there is enough review and evidence and don't get into situations where the auditors are finding something 
you should be ahead of your game and if there are things that you find after the fact send an email to your manager send an email to your controller explain the situation after all all these people are humans they understand the situation and they can even guide you and if need be open the books and book it right there are enough procedures that we always have after the close that lets you document things and book it into the books record the transactions into the books so i want to call it before we start with this question i want to call the audience's attention to our third poll in the polls on the right hand side of the screen under polls so the question is are there any aspects of preparing for ap or ar audit that can be automated Absolutely. I'm a big proponent of automation and tools. This helps your team be more productive and eliminate mundane tasks. Invoice entry is a big uh, one that you can automate. Uh, figure out ways there are multiple systems and tools and RPAs out there in the industry that can help you do that invoice matching with the po is another thing that can be automated book your invoices against po's book your line items against the po line items the amounts against the amounts stated in the po this will help you with good controls are you paying outside of the amount that was budgeted for are you paying under uh, the amount like eventually you'll be using these things to do your analysis. Approval workflow is a very big one that can be automated. Utilize your systems and tools to do an approval workflow for your invoices. You can, you have good evidence when you do it through the systems, uh, the review process is done. And also the reviewer can ask questions. Where is the contract? Where does this say on the contract? Or what kind of services were there? What were the terms, payment terms that we were supposed to pay with? Then the last one on the AP side is payment disbursements. You can connect your systems and tools with the banks and have a fixed payment disbursement process. Of course, maintaining segregation of duties of like, um, the person who is approving the invoices, entering the invoices should not be the one making the payments. The payments should generally reside with your treasury department. They have all controls in the bank. Um, do positive pay matching so that uh, when the bank sees something, they can highlight things for you. So there are multiple things that can be automated on the AP side. On the AR side, similar to invoice entry, invoice generation, as soon as a service has happened, the delivery has occurred, there, there can be triggers that helps automated invoice generation. Um, payments, payments receipt in the bank. Your customers can send payments directly to the bank or even checks to the bank. Utilize the lockbox that your uh, banks provide. Lockbox is a great tool and great service that the banks provide, and it eliminates a lot of work from your team's side. Um, cash application is another one that can be easily um, automated, like cash received in the bank based on certain criteria it does uh, your automated cash application to your invoices. So the, there are multiple things that can be automated and nowadays AP and AR automation is big. Utilize those tools. RPA is a big term nowadays in the uh, finance transformation industry. So utilize those tools and see how can you streamline and simplify your processes. Is a great uh, flow into the next question is how can businesses streamline their AP and AR data in order to be audit ready? Um, standardize your processes. I think that's the first and foremost standardize your processes generate templates that is used across the board for example vendor setup template right keep a standard template keep it simple 
but enough to know what goes in, C create processes through which that template can be automated and the vendors can automatically type in their information instead of you getting some information from them and typing it out in your systems. Uh, automate your W9 receipt. Credit review process is another one that you can create standard templates and also see if you can link the information in your credit review process through in through the DUNS module, right? DNB has all this information that can authenticate if it's a real customer or not. Automate your workflow processes and supporting document requirements. Put out the uh, processes for your business that this is what we are going to do and these are the supporting documents that you need in order to review invoices uh, that you're receiving as part of services and keep your business as your partner in this they will be able to tell you for certain vendors what kind of supporting document they would like what kind of supporting document uh, they can get, which can also help them do their work. So different things that you can do. Obviously, I can stress enough on the documentation aspect of things. Document your processes. If you document it, it's easier for your teams to follow through and also for your um, SOX people to come in and do internal audit and eventually your auditors. And this becomes your day to day operation. So there is nothing out of ordinary that you will have to do when the audit comes about. And review process, having good review process, making sure there is enough evidence of review and maintaining segregation of duties. That's a very critical aspect of audit and SOX readiness. Great, thank you. So what we'd like to do now is open the webinar up to Q&A from the attendees, and I'd invite attendees to submit your questions using the chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen. So why don't we just jump in and address some of the questions that have been submitted so far. The first of which is, we are struggling to get better control over our AR and AP processes. Do you have any advice for us? So when you say better control, um, I would ask you to go back and think through what are the things that you're not able to control? Is it the credit review process? Is it the receipt of cash or payments from your customers? Is it cash application that you're not able to do? I would like you to break it down into different aspects. The recommendation that I would uh, give you is start small and start with the process that impacts your business the most. If it is cash that you're not able to reconcile, start there instead of going and doing the holistic Q2C process review. Look at your cash balances. Look at how you're receiving cash. See if you can leverage your banks to help you implement the lockbox process and see if you're able to do cash application more easily. Provide information to your customers that when they are making the payment, reference the invoice number. Simple things can help you eliminate a lot of mundane and uh, tiring tasks of doing these things. Thank you. The next audience question is, what's the biggest mistake you've seen companies make in trying to improve the efficiency of their AP and AR processes and how do they get past it? Um, I'll, I'll start with AP. One of the things that I have consistently seen is lack of knowledge for the AP clerk as to what that vendor is about. So having that and communicating or training your AP people to at least understand what kind of vendor, what kind of invoices, how often should we expect invoices from these vendors helps them elevate their understanding and the questions that they would ask when reviewing the invoices. For example, if, um, if there is a vendor who's providing food services, 
and AP is not aware of it and it's not clearly stated, AP is going to go ask uh, an engineering person, what is this invoice? Why are we getting this invoice? So making sure your AP is aware of the type of vendors, type of departments who should be approving helps quite a lot in making good assessment of the invoices. Thank you. The next question is, what systems do you use to check transactions for completeness and accuracy? Um, there are multiple systems. Of course, uh, your internal systems uh, tells you the completeness and accuracy. So if it is uh, like I have used NetSuite, QuickBooks, and also internal database systems in the past to check the completeness and accuracy. But it depends on each company and each system, what they are using to monitor their data. Great, thank you. The next question is kind of a sensitive one, and that is our governance systems are routinely ignored by our staff. What can we do to get better compliance with our own rules? I think the first question I would ask is why are they being routinely ignored? Is it that's how um, the culture of the organization is? And that's where I go back to set the tone right on the top. Like you need to work with your leadership and ensure they understand the importance of governance and compliance. If they do, they will communicate it on your behalf. That's the first and foremost step. And then second, obviously, that the way I would address this is, what's the impact of not being compliant? Show these users the impact, make them understand that it is not just an admin stuff or just because you have to do it, you have to do it, but make them understand the impact of not being compliant. That helps quite a lot when you're thinking from the people who are supposed to be compliant, like I face this day in, day out when I'm doing a lot of ITGC audits, like my systems guys are asking, why do I need these kind of controls? What's in it for me? Because it's an additional step for them. But when you make them understand that the relationship of how the tool that he's managing gives you the data that you're gonna book in your financials and how that impact works, they will be more than happy to be compliant. Great, thank you. The next question is, how do you think the AP and AR functions are going to evolve over the next couple of years? I do think that AR and AP functions are going to be more and more automated. And one of the things that I will stress on is Let's treat our AP and AR people more as business partners so that they can be our guards before anything falls apart. Don't treat them as just data entry people because they know more than data entry and they can help you be better and more efficient. So that would be one of the biggest things I would do in my company as well as train them bring them to be more than just data entry, show them how to read a PO, how to understand the content of a PO or a contract, and show them how it impacts the work that they are doing. Great, thank you. Next question is, what's the best way to collect money from customers who are always late every month without any issue on invoice accuracy? They are simply late without valid reasons. <laughs> they're just trying to not to get rid of the cash or they're just trying to manage their cash. I think one of the ways that has worked is if they are consistently late and you see that they are purposely trying and this is a trend, see what you can do with your services, right? It's a, it comes out as a threat might be a very strong word, but see what you can do with your services. Is there a way you can limit your services, reduce your services, pause your services, or delay your services until payments are made? And uh, although this is like a 
tit for tat kind of tactic but uh, sometimes you need to get down to those kind of tactics if uh, the customers are really becoming a pain because ultimately that cash what you're supposed to get is what you're counting on on to run your business that's your working capital eventually definitely the next question is how often should i expect to be audited it's a very it depends uh, if you are a private company um the audit cadence is different but if you're a public company the audit cadence uh, you will be audited every quarter uh if you're a private company and you're just uh, starting off there is no audit requirement but uh being maintaining good hygiene like i said before is something that's going to help you whenever you get audited as as you are a private company and getting ready for ipo you will have to make sure your 12 quarters worth of uh, financials are audited so the auditors might come in 18 to 12 18 months before the ipo date and you'll be doing multiple quarterly audits in the same time frame so it it's a very dependent question on what stage your company is in question is one of our biggest challenges is the process in timely payment and approvals of corporate cards of the authorized managers Do you have any insights or words of wisdom about that? So there are a lot of cards in the industry out there who are implementing an auto review process and a workflow process. See if you can get hold of those things, but one of the things that has worked for us is our AP system or AP team also has access to those cards. So when we do the review of these cards and we see that the user has not provided uh, receipts and uh, payments are getting uh, delayed we start pinging them of course you want to have that cadence of alerting uh, the users and across the board uh, the employees on your timelines but again you if you are still not seeing them there are charges of late payments that impact uh, the co corporate credit cards you will have to bake that in your policy of credit cards that if there are late charges or late payments is the employee going to be responsible there has to be some consequences which generally forces the employees to be more on time the soft nudges always help alerts always help but if there are things that you can do to show those consequences um uh, then you should go ahead and do that obviously based on your manager based on uh, how the company is doing and the relationship the company can take the hit of those uh, overcharges or late payment charges but if that person is consistently late then at some point you need to have them take the hit of those charges on their behalf Thank you Ruchi for this amazing discussion and thank you everyone in the audience for joining us today for this excellent webinar. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.